Hey friends, it's Just The Gems. I'm Brandon. Something of a more laid back setup tonight because I wanted to just chill with you all and talk a little bit about some of my favorite music, if that's okay. I'm not a stoner. I feel like that's what stoners do best, right? They sit around stoned and talk about records. That's a thing. Was that just in the 70s? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Don't do drugs. So I picked out the 10 soundtrack albums that I think are just the creme de la creme which is French for cream of the cream, which I think um, it just is supposed to mean really good. And um, I wanna share my 10 soundtrack favorites with you in the hopes that you will share your soundtrack favorites with me. It doesn't have to be 10. I'm not asking you to write an essay. I'm not your teacher. But if you wanna share one or two of your favorite soundtrack albums down in the comments, please, I would love to hear them, especially if I haven't heard any of the music, I would love to check it out because I'm always looking for new soundtracks. And the thing about a video game soundtrack is if it's good enough, I might even buy the game, even if it wasn't, even if it wasn't on my radar at all, right? I, I like, I picked up certain games on this list that we're about to talk about that I had, I had no intention of playing until I, until I found out about the soundtrack. And then I was all in, I was like, I don't care. $60, boom, put my money down. Give me the game. So you could maybe help build my backlog for me. I appreciate it. All right, I I don't know if I really put these in a, did I put these in? A, I mean, I numbered them. I numbered them from one to 10, but did I intend for that to be like a ranking? We'll just say that it is, it's a ranking. And if you disagree with my ranking, let me know. That's what the comments are for. Okay, first up, the first soundtrack that I wanna highlight this might seem a bit strange, especially if you've paid attention to the sorts of games I like and the kinds of soundtracks those games tend to have. This is a little bit of a strange one. And the reason that I like it is because it's strange. So this first entry, number 10 on my list, is Earthbound, or Mother 2, if you will. And that's by Hip Tanaka and Keiichi Suzuki. So uh, Hir Hirokazu Tanaka, I call him Hip, you know, we're tight so hip tanaka was pretty well known for making the weirdest nintendo soundtracks metroid hip tanaka super mario land i think the original super mario land someone fact check me if i'm wrong but pretty sure hip tanaka he just made some of the weirdest quirkiest most interesting uh, kid icarus right kid icarus hip tanaka um, some of the i think mario paint songs possibly or he oversaw them at least he's he's esoteric and a little bit strange he makes he, he he focuses in on kind of simple melodies and just does the weirdest things with them so the track from this game that i wanted to highlight is battle against an unsettling opponent this is such a i don't know like it seems pretty simple and it, it almost doesn't seem like a battle theme because it's like what is what's happening here is this a battle theme? I don't know. This seems a little too low key, but it's just, I mean, it's right. It's unsettling in a way, but it's also fun and kind of exciting. I just want to, I want to play a little bit of it for you. Um, I this this whole video is probably going to get demonetized because of all the music, but that's fine. Whatever. Make like $3 a month from YouTube. Upright bass. Love that upright bass. Oh, it's just, it's so weird. And you get this kind of like alien sound in the background. And then we just pick up and we get the, the bongos just going, oh. They get the shaker in there. And you kind of see how it just kind of picks up the pace a little bit and it just gets a little more fun. And then we get that like it just kind of cuts in and it like throws us off because we were feeling the groove. It just keeps us unsettled the whole time. I just, uh... and Then we get that alien sound coming back in more prominently. And then it, the way it stops and loops, it's just, it's, it feels like it's a, like it's a mistake, but it's not like that's on purpose and it happens and it throws, it's just, just ah, I just, I don't know. I just love it. I just love it. I just love it so much guys. Oh my gosh. I love it. He's just such an interesting composer. 
Um, I guess I don't know that he wrote this track. It could be Suzuki. Um, but they were they were pretty well in, in lockstep on this soundtrack. Um, and I, phew, I just love it. I just love it. All right. Uh, Earthbound, fantastic soundtrack. Number nine on my list is Blue Reflection, Second Light. And this one's by Hayato Asano. So I'm pretty sure he also did the first Blue Reflection. So he's bringing back some themes, especially the main theme of Blue Reflection. And there's something about his music in this series. And I, I got to be honest, I'm not familiar with his work in any of his other games. But there's something about the music in Blue Reflection that is so nostalgic feeling. It's not nostalgic. Like, I don't, I never listen to music like this. It doesn't remind me of a particular time in my life, but something about it is triggering the nostalgia center of my brain. And it's hard to explain. Let's listen to a bit of my favorite song from Blue Reflection Second Light. All right, this is A Hopeful Astraea. It's got this kind of like, just slightly out of tune sound to it in that main instrument and maybe that's part of the nostalgia like you remember those cassette tapes if you're close to my age remember those cassette tapes those like read-along cassette tapes and they would tell you to turn the tape over and it's just something about that let me get the melody comes in with this sort of synthy piano sound like it doesn't sound real but but it's beautiful. Mm. And then here, we step out of that kind of out of tune, sort of lo-fi sound, and we get just strings and guitar and the piano playing the octaves up at the top of the scale just just beautiful and heartfelt and sad and hopeful I guess like the title suggests oh my gosh man it's just oof. It's just mm. let me get the swell of the strings here as we move through the end of this freight oh Here we get the blue reflection theme kind of worked back into the song in the background here. Mm. Mm. Oh, Chef's kiss, Chef's kiss, baby. Yeah, his oh, his work on this on this series is just heartrending. I just love it. It's just beautiful. Next up on my list, I have The World Ends With You, and that's by Takeharu Ishimoto. Did I say that right? Yeah, Takeharu Ishimoto. The World Ends With You is is really another pretty unique one in the JRPG space in particular, but really just kind of in the video game space in general. It's very, like, pop, hip-hop. It's, it's not anything like pretty much any other game. And I guess that's appropriate because... The World Ends With You is very unlike any other JRPG. If you weren't around or didn't play the DS original, the idea was that you had two characters you were controlling during battle at all times, one on the upper screen and one on the lower screen. The lower screen you controlled with the stylus. The upper screen, I think you use the, like, the game pad and input different button combinations to make them do moves. And it was just, I mean, I'm pretty sure I had to play it. If there was an easy mode, I definitely played it on easy mode because my brain is too dumb to do that. And I know that in the ports that they've done since then, including the one on the Switch, they've kind of redone the battle system so it's all on one screen. A lot of people have said that that's just not as good as the original. I would concur. I tried to play the Switch remake and I just didn't. See, I really wanted to play it on the TV. I think that was the problem. I didn't want to play it handheld and the TV controls are not good. So I, I may need to go back and give it a try, a real honest try in handheld mode, but it's just it just didn't work. But the original is just always gonna have a special place in my heart and just the music. I've listened to the music at forever since I played this game. Like I, I've played the game 
when it first came out, way, way back when, I don't know, 2000, 2007, I think, way back in 2007 when it came out, and then I haven't played it since, the original game, but I've listened to that soundtrack pretty consistently throughout. I think the song I want to highlight, maybe this is obvious, maybe this is like the bop, the main hit from this soundtrack, but uh, it's called Calling. It's just... I don't even know, like, I have a hard time commenting on this sort of music because it's really outside of my normal genre preferences. You know, just like music with lyrics in it, like most of the songs, I don't know most, but a good number of the songs in the soundtrack have lyrics. Very unusual for a JRPG, especially at the time, on the DS, right? Like a handheld game. Crazy. Show appreciation, guys, come on. Yeah, I realize I'm just kind of sitting here like, it's just, for one thing, I get caught up in the music. For another thing, like I said, I have a hard time commenting on it because I don't speak that language of that of that style of music uh, as much as I do the other songs on this list, but I just, I still love it. I just love it so much. I think it's just a brilliant soundtrack and, um, I probably should play Neo The World Ends With You, yeah, I think, maybe. It's. I mean, we were lucky enough to get that sequel, and, and I haven't played it. I bought it, at least. I wanted to buy it so that they would at least have the sale on the books, but yeah, I, I need to get around to that. Okay, next up, I've got East 8, Lacrimosa of Donna, and this is by, well, okay, so this is by Yukihiro Jindo with the Falcom Sound Team JDK. This is one thing that I will be unreservedly critical about Falcom of. I love Falcom, one of my favorite developers of all time. I will be critical of Falcom because they do not do enough or much of anything to highlight the individual composers on their soundtracks. At least I, you know, like I want to know who does, who did the music in Trails? Trails, Trails in the Sky, who did the music in Trails for, to Azure? You know, who did the music in, in Cold Steel? I want to know the specifics. I want to know who did what track. But no, it's just the Falcom Sound Team JDK. And, you know, it's it's a bummer to me that they don't, for some reason, don't feel like crediting, specifically crediting the composers is, is, a, is a priority for them. Now, could I dig and find out who did what? Maybe, maybe, but like, you shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to do that. And the song I'm going to play, you know what, you know the song I'm going to play. If you've played this game... You know the song I'm gonna play. I'm basic. I'm sorry. It's Sunshine Coastline. This this song, right? It it's coming in with this just the most basic, the most simplistic of chord progressions in the history of popular music, right? Like it's so it's so simple, but at the same time, it's just done so well and so energetically that I don't even care. I'm just caught up in it from the moment it starts, from the moment those guitar riffs play at the beginning. And then it just blossoms into this huge, huge piece of music. And this is the beginning of the game. I remember sitting down playing this game for the first time being like, this is what they're opening with? I mean, not literally opening, but like the first time you get to run around in the world, like this is the song you're hearing. And I just, I, I mean, they, they know how to do it. Falcom sound team JDK. I mean, I may not know their names, but my hat is off. They know what they're doing. Let me get the minor fall here that leads into the, the, the bridge. I just absolute brilliance. I can't. Mm. 
some of the music they do is like the kind of music that makes me as a as a composer myself angry a little bit like come on like how do you, how did you make this so cool like most composers can write a catchy melody but like making a song as cool as this i don't know how you do that i don't know how you learn to do that maybe it's just born into you and that's not fair My one criticism, if I have to level a criticism against this song, I'm pretty sure that the drums are fake. I wish that they had just, I don't know, ponied up for some for some real drums. I mean, they're samples, you know what I mean? They don't, they don't sound like synth drums, but it's, I don't know, some of the cymbal crashes are too consistent and uniform. I'm just, I don't think that it's real, but it's, it's just still, it's just so good. Oh, and the, the way they, they take that note there that was a minor in the, the first phrasing and then make it a major key is just, oh, sorry. I mean, this if you don't know music at all, it's probably nonsense. And if you do know music, you're probably frustrated because I'm not commenting enough about the musicality of it. Why am I making this video? Who am I making this for? I guess I'm making it for myself. And I hope that you enjoy it as well. But I guess if I'm not going to make it for myself, if I'm not going to have fun with it, then why am I doing it? All right, next up, we have Xenogears from Yasunori Mitsuda. You might know uh, Yasunori Mitsuda as probably my favorite composer of all time. He's one of only two composers that appear twice on this list. Spoiler warning. And his first entry here is number six, Xenogears. I could, I could pick any track. I could pick any track from this soundtrack. They're all all timers. They're just, it's just brilliantly composed. He was hot off of Chrono Trigger. I don't know if he did that front mission game after Chrono Trigger before, probably after, whatever, it doesn't matter. He was coming off of that and he put himself in the hospital working so hard on that. And the team behind Chrono Trigger was like, hey, we're making this new game over here and it's gonna have robots and you're gonna kill God and it's gonna be fun. Do you wanna do the music? And he was like, I almost died the first time, but sure, why not? So yeah, there are so many that I could pick to go over, but I'm gonna pick one that I'm kind of surprised at myself that I'm picking it actually. I'm picking We the Wounded Follow the Light. And this is like a, a choral piece. I mean, and it's sung by just MIDI synth voices, PlayStation 1 chipset kind of deal I'm you know when I hear it I'm taken back to the moments in the game when it plays and it is just beautiful and haunting especially in the context in which it's played it is a haunting and kind of disturbing track if you know the context and mm. Mm. Writing choral music is kind of fun because just getting to play around with all these different progressions and kind of thinking of each note as a different section, a different group of singers. I love it. The dramatic pause right in there, just dead air. And then it just picks up and it's so sad. It's so sad, guys. It's so sad. Man. The way he hangs on this phrase for several iterations and kind of 
varies it up. He, he, he does it, I think, one more time than I feel like he should, but to good effect. And that, yeah, that closing chord is just, I don't know, just shivers, just shivers up my spine. I just, ugh. And he just writes this music like it's nothing. He just poof, throws it out there. I don't understand it. A lot of you watching this, if you're if you haven't played as many of the old classics, you probably are familiar with his work in uh, the Xenoblade games, and uh, he does great work there too with you know several other collaborators. But for me, I I think the music that he worked on solo is just my favorite favorite game music. It's just. It's just, there's just something about his solo work when he just sits down with the entirety of a game and writes every track. There's something special about that. And with games getting bigger and bigger, you know, I understand why that's not the most realistic thing to expect. But, you know, I just, I love that. Nobuo Ematsu, he said recently, that uh, he's probably never going to compose an entire game soundtrack again because it's just taking it's just too takes too much out of him and he's not you know, he's an older man now and I get it but it's like man that's like that's so sad and you know with some of the things he said recently about how game music has sort of changed in recent years it's true I, I feel like it is true and I actually as I'm looking at my list there's not a ton of super modern games on here. And I, I think that's in part because there are fewer game composers that are writing game soundtracks the way I the way I prefer them. I, I don't want a film score in my game necessarily. Um, I understand the necessity of it for, you know, cutscenes being fully produced things nowadays. And I, I wouldn't say that 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 sort of music shouldn't exist for those scenes, but taking special care to still write music that has that feel that, and maybe it, maybe it requires the composer to put some limitations on themselves, right? Composers back in the eight and 16 and even 32 bit eras to an extent had limitations on what they could do. They couldn't just record full orchestral music for everything. They, they didn't sit down and, and score a game like they would a movie because oftentimes you were advancing text boxes and they, they couldn't guarantee how they, they had no idea how long it was going to take you to read a text box. And so they couldn't time the music to it on rare, you know, rare occasions. They would do something like that with auto advancing text and and have music synced up to it. And that was cool and everything. But like for the most part, they needed to make music that just worked, that just fit the mood of the scene no matter where you were in it and yeah there's just something about that kind of music and the and the craft of that kind of music that i like and that we just don't see as much anymore it's not completely gone i'm not one of these oh woe is me my the thing i love is gone now forever just because there's other things and there's other people's tastes that are being catered to instead of just mine like, it's fine. I, I think it's great that, that there's music out there. It, there's people that love the, the filmic type scores in games, and that's great. Like, there's a lot for them to enjoy, I think. But um, but for me, it's like I just love this, you know, these, these gamey sounds. All right, that's enough out of me about that. We're halfway through our list. Let's, let's, let's move along, shall we? Next up, I've got Persona 4. And uh, this is by Shoji Meguro. And uh, also Atsushi Kitajo and Ryota Kozuka. I am not as familiar with those two individuals. Uh, Shoji Meguro seems to get the credit when people talk about the composer of Persona. It's Shoji Meguro. So I'm not sure what their contributions were. And I feel kind of bad knowing now that there's more people involved. I was ready to just say Shoji Meguro. But I was like, I better check. You never know. So there's a couple other people involved. And if they wrote this song that I'm about to talk about, props um otherwise megaro san hats off to you all of the uh persona games at least the ones i've played three four and five have just spectacular just spectacular music it's just it's amazing it's it's it has more in common i guess with um the world ends with you where it's mostly lyrical and kind of more jazzy um kind of hip-hoppy in persona 3's case 
and in Persona 4's case, a little more poppy than your typical JRPG soundtrack. And I just, I love it. It's so catchy. And, you know, part of it is I'm sure you hear these songs for a hundred plus hours. They're gonna, even if you hated them, I feel like you would develop some sort of Stockholm Syndrome for the music in a game like Persona 4. And even though, like I say, Persona 3 and 5 have fantastic, incredible music, I'm giving the tip of the hat to Persona 4 as my personal favorite out of those three. And the song I want to play is Your Affection. Something about this introduction just feels really kind of like, I don't know, metropolitan, which is funny because this game takes place in a tiny town, a tiny rural village. But it just feels upbeat, like you're busy, like you're trying to get somewhere. And just, oh, the bass. Just... I can't understand a word that the singer is singing. The things that I think I hear her saying, she's not saying. And some of them are borderline inappropriate. Some of them just are complete nonsense. I've looked up the words before and I can't make them stick in my head because it sounds nothing like what she's saying. She does something in this chorus that is astonishingly beautiful in its dissonance. This song utilizes this dissonance a lot. We're coming up right here. That dissonance right there in the voices is somehow beautiful. I love it. I love it when composers are able to take a dissonant set of sounds and put them together and still make it beautiful. Like it should be jarring. It should be, you know, you're playing two essentially half step or maybe even the full step note apart from each other and you're singing these two notes that are too close to sound good but the way it's built up and the execution of it and she seems to be singing like just at the top of her register like there's a little bit of a strain i feel like she maybe is more comfortable in a slightly lower register but it's just it just hits and it just mm, gets me i like that's another song that i get chills from when i hear that dissonant like that beautiful harmonic dissonance i love it next up i have uh, one of my newest favorite games this is a game that came out a couple of year year and a half ago something like that and i'm trying to get everybody to play it and i've heard from several of you who have told me that you picked it up because i talked about it and i want to say that means so much to me i'm glad that you like take anything i say remotely seriously that's so nice of you and I hope that you're enjoying it if you've picked it up on my recommendation. If you hate it, I'm very sorry. But I think a lot of people that I've that I've heard from have said that they're actually really enjoying it and they never probably would have given it a chance. So I feel really good when I hear people say that because like it's kind of my life mission to get as many people to play this game as possible. And that's Harvest Stella. Did I say the name of the game yet? I don't know if I did. These off the cuff videos are fun. I have no idea what I'm doing. Harvest Stella by Goshina. Uh, another of my favorite composers of all time. Uh, and I and I don't know that many of his soundtracks, to be honest with you. I need to start digging into some of them, but I kind of just kind of want to let it happen organically. And yeah, his music in Harvestella is just astonishingly good. It is banger after banger for an entire soundtrack. And he hits so many moods and it just accompanies the, the 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 parts of the game that the songs are in it just it just fits everything so well everything meshes so well together i love it the song i'm going to play is one from a little bit farther into the game and it's called castle of illusion and just when i thought he could not surprise me or top himself in a game like this with the soundtrack being so consistently good he writes a song like this and just drops it in there. And here's the thing, interesting thing about this song. This plays during one of the dungeons and throughout the game, you get to go back to all of the dungeons and there's side quests and things that you can do in all the dungeons. And you can return to this dungeon as well. This is the only dungeon where this song that you're about to hear only plays the first time through the dungeon and then it's a different song for the rest of the game. I kid you not, and this is silly, this is stupid, 
but I was digging through the menu looking for I was like is there anything or like not just in the menus but like looking around in the in the dungeon itself for an NPC or something is there any way I can get that old music back I was looking desperately in the game for a way to bring that music back because mm, I love it so much gets this kind of fiddle going like energetic fiddle and then this like choir I don't know if they're singing some sort of nonsense made up language or what but but you get these like shredding electric guitar and fiddles playing together with just the rock drums and this like that fiddle effect of just playing the same kind of the same note rhythmically over and over is just when we pick up we kind of emphasize the drums here just kind of let it go wow Ugh. <sighs> then we get this flute I'm not sure what kind of flute this is if it's a, probably not a flute Ugh. Oh, and we're coming up. We're coming up to the part. We get the, the voices coming back. Mm. Takes us on a chord change that I would not have predicted. And then we're just full strings with the, sh the guitars are still shredding. The oh. mm. You guys. everything. He's brought it all in. Oh. Seamlessly looping around. Oh. I, I gotta stop. I gotta stop. I gotta stop. Oh. Maybe that one should have been number one. I Like, I feel like Man, I don't know. I mm. Anyway, we got to move on. Number three is Tales of Legendia, also by Goshina. Um, big surprise. So he's, yes, he's uh, the other the guy. I already spoiled it, but you know, he's the other guy that's on here twice. And Tales of Legendia came out of nowhere for me. I've spoken at length before about the music in the Tales of games and how I think it's just not very good. It's not bad. It's just like kind of meh. It's just middle of the road kind of functional music. To me, a lot of the music in modern games is functional and it, it, it accompanies the scene that it's in, but it's not memorable. It's not sticky in and of itself. And I really love memorable, sticky music and Tales of as a series just doesn't have that. The exception being Tales of Legendia, which was written by a different composer, specifically Goshina and it is one of the more unique, unique isn't quite the right word. It's not unique in the way that Persona or The World Ends With You is unique. It, it doesn't use the weirdest instruments or the weirdest styles. The thing that's unique about the uh, Tales of Legendia soundtrack to me is how busy it is. It's it's a lot of live instruments and, and, and synthetic instruments as well, of course, but um, playing just very big, busy melodies, counter melodies, just tracks that are laid upon tracks, and it shouldn't work. It should be cacophonous. It should be too much, but he makes it work, and that is always astonishing to me when I hear something from a composer where I'm like, I don't understand how they made this work. How did they do this? No idea. Not a clue. Let's listen to We'll Meet in Front of the Fountain, which is the theme for like kind of the main town, first big town that you that you go to in the game. It's one of the first tracks you hear. And the moment I heard it, I was like, this is something. This is something special. This is something unique. It's 
something about this, the way this is recorded, it just feels like it was recorded in a big room. And a lot of times, composers will try to, you know, remove the sense of space from the music being played. get this just super interesting juxtaposition of this weird kind of synthy bass thing with the strings and then just super energetic and like borderline screechy violins they're not quite reaching the level of screechiness but they're they're like flirting with it And I think this is, he, he's kind of letting it rest a little bit. Like, there's still a lot going on, but it's its a little more spaced out. It's a little, a little more room to breathe. I just, mm. And then we get that weird synth with the strings again. Come full circle. Oh. I just love it. Oh. I don't know how he does it. The whole soundtrack is like that. Like, there's just there's just so much going on, but it's so tight at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. I'm bad at explaining things. Next up, number two on my list is uh, by Yasunori Nishiki, and this is Octopath Traveler. Octopath Traveler came out in the kind of earlier days of the Switch when there weren't a ton of you know JRPGs on the platform yet and I just fell in love with it the aesthetic and the individual stories it was like a book of short stories in video game form and you get to see all of these characters go on their journeys and then when you kind of discover the hidden secret connection between all of them which the game kind of admirably doesn't go out of its way to jam down your throat it's just kind of like left open to interpretation a little bit but you can start to see through doing the secret quests that lead to like the final secret boss how everybody's quests are connected to each other and it's pretty dark and it's it's pretty interesting and the music i just could not believe the music in this game this is what i always wanted video game music to become when i was a kid this is the classic video game composition sound but fully orchestrated like this is just beautiful orchestral real live instruments throughout the, the entirety of this game and I mean there's some synth of course but like it, it's it's very intentionally orchestral but the songs themselves are written like old school video game songs and yeah I just I I love it and the song I want to play is called River of Life and this is another one that's kind of a deep cut on the soundtrack. It's not the, the main theme or any of the battle themes, which you've probably heard if, you've, if you're familiar with this game at all. Um, this is just, I think it's a, a town theme. It's been a while since I've played the game. I've listened to the music way more than I've even played the game, and I probably put 80 hours in the game. But yeah, this, this River of Life song, I just it's gorgeous, and I want to play it for you right now. Got a barking dog. She doesn't like this song. The question is, is she going to stop barking on her own? Or am I going to have to go and ask her to stop? She's a she's a little bit elderly, and I think sometimes she's, she's pretty deaf. And I think sometimes she falls asleep and starts to dream and thinks she hears something or sees something, and she'll just dart up and just be on full alert and barking and upset. And then she looks around, and we're looking at her like, you all right? And she's like, sorry. I think maybe that's what happened. All right. Let's play River of Life. Yeah, just, oh, this, just a simple guitar melody, and then the piano comes in to match it. Just the, just the light little cymbal taps, like raindrops. And it's just... It's 
just realized I'm not saying anything. I'm trying to commentate about this music, but I'm just getting into it. Just so simple. The, the repeating sound of the piano and the guitar. And then when it changes here, it kind of takes on a level of seriousness, sort of. But like maybe maybe an earnestness. Maybe earnestness is the word. It becomes more earnest. Yeah, just oof. Just beautiful. It's astonishing. Just a simple melody with this repeating piano and guitar. It's just so simple. I love it. I love it. And then we loop around. I just want to keep listening to it, but this is going to be an hour-long video if I don't wrap this up. Finally, we come to our last game, number one on my list. Um, and if you ask me to rank these games, these soundtracks, next week, I might put them in a different order. I might throw a different game in there. Things get moved around all the time. My heart is fickle. It's fickle. Not for you, honey, to my wife. Um, not for you, but for music and favorite games and stuff that doesn't matter all that much. It's fickle. I think it's a little bit fickle. Um, but right now, uh, as of the recording of this, um, I'm going to say this is my favorite soundtrack, and it is, of course, Chrono Cross from Yasunori Mitsuda. Many people agree uh, that this is the finest piece of game music created, and it uh, has yet to be fully matched. I think any of the, the soundtracks on this list are in the running for the uh, the award of best game soundtrack of all time. But Chrono Cross is one that has spent more time in that top slot for me than any other game. Uh, just because of how memorable and beautiful and appropriate it is for the game that it's in. I think that the great thing about this is regardless of how people feel about the game, and the game is divisive, it was not what most people, including myself, if I'm honest, wanted from a Chrono Trigger sequel, but the music is on its own. It stands alone regardless of, of how you feel about the game. Uh, there's a good chance that you'll like the soundtrack. This is the only game for which I bought the soundtrack before the game came out game came out in Japan there was a, a period of time where they were working on the translation and so the game hadn't come out over here soundtrack was available to buy in Japan I ordered it to my home uh, as a teenager ordered it from Japan and I listened to this thing I still have the disc somewhere I still have the case and everything it's not in the best shape it's survived several moves but I'm never getting rid of that sucker because I just it means so much to me it's such a beautiful album of music even separate from the game. It's just uh, amazing. I think a lot of people would probably play Scars of Time. That's kind of the, the opening theme, the one that everybody knows. I wanted to play Shore of Dreams. This is another one, I guess, probably a, a pretty popular one as far as this game goes. But, and it's a simple one. It's pretty short, but it's beautiful. And especially now, having played the Radical Dreamers edition, Chrono Cross and actually played through Radical Dreamers, which I never had done before. Playing through Radical Dreamers and hearing this song in that game and learning what this song is, and I won't spoil it because it actually it is something. If you've played Chrono Cross but never played Radical Dreamers, this song is something in the world of Chrono Cross and Radical Dreamers. It's it's a song. It's not something that's just for the background of the game. It's actually a piece of music in the world of this in the world of this game. And learning that about it just gave it so much more weight to me. And it was already one of my all time favorite pieces of game music. And to have that additional meaning added to it was just so great. I didn't expect for that to happen. I didn't think that that is something that would happen. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a game that keeps on giving. So let's listen to Shore Dreams. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. But the 
kind of violin samples coming in over the just a rhythmic, like a heartbeat choir Oz. And then just the really simple, like stringed. I don't know if I want to say that's a guitar, but kind of simple plucking. And it just creates this just beautifully ethereal atmosphere. And wow, I don't even like. It's just, it's not what I was expecting when I put this game in for the first time. Just seeing how this track is just, I mean, it's just the world map song for one of the, for one of the worlds. You wouldn't think that it would be all that, I don't know, like, it's just a world map song. But it is, I don't know, it's so powerful, is that? I know, I'm being real corny. I'm being super corny, but I don't know. Music just does that stuff to me, man. It's just like, I, I don't know. I just get so worked up about the music and games and because it's like, I love music anyway. And games give me the opportunity to assign all this extra meaning into a song. And music is already one of the biggest conveyors of meaning for me anyway but hearing game music especially from a game that I love it just there's all of those feelings the nostalgia the emotions cling on to it and when I hear it it's like I'm living it all again and it's just I just love it I just love it Whew. anyway thanks for hanging out uh and uh you know, um, sharing you know, your favorite soundtracks in the comments if you have. Um, and if you haven't, please do. I would love to um, check out some of your favorites. And I hope that you enjoyed this. Um, you know, it, it's it's a little bit, it's a di obviously a different sort of video for me. Um, but I just wanted to sit down and just kind of be chill and talk about some of this stuff because it's so important to me. And something about scripting a video and kind of doing it in a fully produced big kind of way, like I do for most of my videos, just didn't feel like kind of the way to convey what I was getting at. Like I could write a script about my favorite video game music and I'm sure it'd be fine, but like, I don't know, me stumbling around and just being like dumbstruck listening to it. Yeah, it's just that I feel like that's kind of the way I had to do it. So anyway. I hope that you uh, enjoyed this and I hope that you will come back and watch more videos on my channel and interact with me here or on social media. Uh, I've got a Patreon if you want to join the Discord and uh, hang out with us there. Um, you're, you, I would love to have you. Um, thank you for your support regardless. Watching the video, clicking like, doing all the subscribing stuff is, is so much. Like it's more than I can honestly like ask for in good conscience you all do so much even just watching the videos that i put out if you're watching this and you're you know however 45 minutes or whatever it is into a video uh, about me just umming and eyeing about video game music um you're incredible and uh just the fact that you're around is so cool to me and i hope that you come back and uh until next time bye